what I've done with my career is I focused on information integration. It, really what I'm interested in is taking very diverse kinds of information and bringing them together. So depending on how you look at it, um, you could say that the, the work I did in inventing technologies both to store new kinds of, tech, of, um, of data in the database so that we could query it, or in terms um, more recently of allowing us through a high-level interface to get at data that might be stored in lots and lots of different kinds of places. Um, all of that helped uh, IBM. Um, a lot of it fed into our product line. There's, there, but on a on a bigger front, what we what we did is we leveraged those small uh, technical advances to allow us to start a new business for IBM and that helped actually really shape also the industry um, in that regard to make information management a, a real term, right? So I mean, in fact, uh, you know, if you look back when I started doing this work, we were all about database management and database management was what the industry talked about and by the end of the time when as IBM had this business in information integration and in content management and in database management and so on, um, it was clear we needed a bigger umbrella uh, and so they've been kind enough to credit me with giving some of the push um, to do that. One thing that um, clearly happened is I was part of the team that helped put enterprise information integration on the map of the, in terms of um, popularizing that term with analysts, helping them understand that this was a core problem for businesses and so on. So those would probably be key ways that um, the industry was impacted, this kind of a shift from very narrowly focused to much broader um, set of work around general kinds of information and then the focus on integration in particular. Right. It certainly helped me because I was a very shy kid mm -hmm. and when I graduated um, from school I didn't have the strength to stand up to guys and pound my fist on the table and so on and so I had to learn a, a new style and that that I had to learn a way to get myself across and out there. And being a woman gave me permission to learn a gentler way of communicating and still getting ideas across. It, it gave, it, it, I gave myself permission to ask questions, I guess, but, it, but it, I think it came out of this, the female culture. We're allowed to ask questions. We don't have to be smarter than everybody in the room. So that certainly, I think, helped. It made it so that people really liked to work with me. Um, you know, I was just, I was non-confrontational and I was, I was easy to talk to and I liked ideas and all of that I think is, is kind of more commonly associated with, with women. The other way it really helped is that if you want to be a manager, being a mom is really good practice and vice versa. So to be honest, <laughs> being a manager sometimes really helped me with my children. It helped to just kind of go, okay, pretend in your head, this is an, a recalcitrant employee. You cannot scream at them, can you? <laughs> you are going to have to find another way to deal with this, right? Yes. And it's a really a hard question because there's so many things that have to come together and so part of the advice does follow on, you know, what I said from the last time, it's treat people well, right? Um, the one thing you must never, never do, especially in a big company uh, like IBM, is you must never make enemies, right? Because it's really a very small company. We, have, we think 400,000 people, oh my, eh, I can annoy this person, I'll never see them again. Not true, if I may be managing you two years from now, right? On the positive side, I mean, I think the thing that I would like to tell people, the thing that I see from a lot of my mentees and, and so on in this generation that's coming in now is you have to have patience. Um, yes, some people get really lucky, supremely lucky, and hit it rich overnight. Um, they find that brilliant idea and they can ride it all the way through. Most of us don't. If you look at most of the successful people, most of us, you know, just kept plotting away and 
poking at something we thought was important and sometimes trying different things in different roles till we found that right place. And you've got to be patient. Uh, it doesn't mean don't have ambition. It doesn't mean don't do your best all the time. Mm -hmm. But if you're really, if you don't have patience, you're not going to be able to turn the ship. I mean, that's one of the things I tell people a lot. Yeah. IBM is great. It's a big ship. If you turn it, you can change the entire industry, and it is the coolest feeling. But it takes a long time to... I mean, when I started my working career, what I knew was I did not like computers, and I really did like puzzles. I mean, I liked figuring things out. Um, uh, but what I learned, uh, you know, as kind of I grew into my role and, and started doing research in areas was that a lot of what computer science is really about is about abstractions and what they're now calling thinking computationally. Well, thinking computationally is a lot like doing puzzles. So to me, do you like figuring out the clever way of, of doing something, the clever algorithms? That, that's, that was fun, right? And the abstractions were just elegant. They were the thing I liked in math when I was in school, right? It was just really elegant and pretty and beautiful. Um, and so it was like taking two things I really did like and, and marrying them and looking them through. So I, did, I really did grow into it, but it was, it was kind of those two sides of me, one liking to do the puzzles and one liking elegance um, that I think gave me strength. And as I realized those were at the core of computer science, that's, I think, where I started to develop sort of a passion for that. Uh, and, you know, I've always been a sort of visual person, so um, probably my whole interest in bringing together diverse information came from, you know, well, it's much more fun to deal with video clips and images <laughs> than it is to deal with boring facts on the page and, and so on. Um, and, you know, so it, little pieces just start to add up. And after a while, as I said, you look back and you see, oh, so this is the common thread. Here's the thread of what it is that I do um, and that I really enjoy. Um, yeah, so I mean, I think what you have to do is have fun. Bottom line, right? You know, first and foremost, my parents. Um, my my mom was a PhD and a, and a professor as well as my father. Um, she actually uh, uh, won the right to work full time at her university in the same department as my father. So she had to fight nepotism laws to get to do that. So she was a great role model in terms of a professional woman who I knew had raised two perfectly fine children, of course, <laughs> um, and. Uh, also someone who would stand up for, for her rights, but she was beloved by the students and faculty, and uh, so she was, she was a great role model. And my father, very different personality, uh, but, you know, clearly I'm a lot of what I am today because my father thought I could do anything, and, you know, he taught me to program when I was a wee little girl, and he employed me in his lab, and um, he was very proud of the way he taught um, and inspired uh, students. He uh, inspired generations and, and won teaching awards for teaching really hard subjects like statistics to mm -hmm. psychology majors who don't like math as a general oh. rule. Um, and still he was an award-winning uh, teacher. So two very strong role models. So I Thank you.